So the Artemis One launch draws near and hotels and Airbnbs are practically sold out. Will you be making it to the launch? If so, here's a few things that you should know from someone that has gone to many launches before. Hey friends, this is Gus with Your Space TV, a channel about rocket launches from Florida, along with other space related content. Keeping it simple and fun for you. I'm Gus, your host. The excitement is growing by the day. The launch of Artemis 1, the sister of Apollo, is just around the corner. On the local news channels here in the East Coast, they're expecting hundreds of thousands of visitors, support staff, and even more. NASA's moon-focused Space Launch System rocket is slated for Monday, August 29th, 2022. Towering a whopping 322 feet tall and thrusting to 8.8 .8 million pounds, it promises to be the biggest, most powerful rocket ever launched from the Space Coast. Also bringing it a level of excitement unseen in Florida since the launch of Apollo 11 to the moon. The Space Coast will most definitely be a busy place. Even though NASA has said that the first launch window is on September 29th, if anything happens or it's scrubbed, they will try it again on September 2nd and September 5th on Labor Day. Oh man, Labor Day. Can you imagine how those beaches are gonna be? Oh, no, not going. Uh? Yes, I am. T0 is on Monday the 29th, like I said, and it's set for 8.33 a.m. And it has a two hour window. Artemis 1 will be launching from launch pad 39B, right over there. For those of you that don't know, the Artemis program aims to return humans back to the moon sometime before this decade. And it will start with the uncrewed Artemis 1. It will take an Orion spacecraft four to six week journey to the moon and back. Artemis 2 will then follow possibly with astronauts, that's not been said yet. Then Artemis 3 will put two astronauts on the surface of the moon sometime after 2024. At least that's what NASA says. But NASA has also said that this launch was supposed to happen two years ago. But I get that going to the moon is definitely not cakewalk. As of now, the SLS has completed its preparations of Orion two days ahead of schedule. The latest update has says that the engineers have successfully reconnected the hydrogen tail service mast, a bilical where the hydrogen leak was detected during a wet dress rehearsal. After the test, they said that no leaks were found, but this was done under ambient conditions inside the vehicle assembly building. They have also replaced the inflatable seal between the module launcher's crew access arm and Orion's launch abort system after it had some minor damage due to the harsh Florida weather while it was sitting on the pad. That seal prevents elements from outside to get inside the capsule or service module. Once the seal was replaced, they finished installing all the other payloads inside the module. So as of now, all the engineers have loaded up their payloads into Artemis. Dear Lord, please don't let me fuck up. I didn't quite copy that. Say again, please. I said everything's a-okay. Yeah, well done. That's what I thought you said. And they're all saying that we are a-okay for launch. So if you're planning on coming to the Space Coast to see the launch, <laughs> be ready. During the space shuttle era that lasted from 1981 to 2011, guests flocked over to the East Coast, scooping up almost every hotel room and loaded every restaurant with guests. So it looks like for me, Rusty's that weekend, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> and even now when there's a crew, like a crew dragon, this whole area gets flooded with people. For the Inspiration4 launch, there was 200,000 people here jammed all in the Space Coast. And I remember, cause I was there. In 2018, when the Falcon Heavy launched, they closed the Max Beerer Bridge. And I believe they're gonna close it this time around as well. I mean, when I say that the Space Coast was jam packed, it was jam packed like butter, butter in a container. 
This week, I'm gonna be posting a new video. It's going to discuss about everything you should expect at launch day, including highway closures and traffic. I spoke to the Titusville Police Department, I went to the NASA badge office and got information from them and the State Highway Patrol. There's also some areas that are restricted that you cannot park your car or an RV. I'll be discussing all of those as well. So if you're coming down here to the Cape, I suggest you subscribe and hit that alert bell. That way I can tell you about what to expect on launch day with traffic. As of June, Peter Crane, the Executive Director of the Space Coast Office of Tourism, said that the Brevard County has about 10,734 hotel rooms and 4,500 vacation rental units. And many of them have already been sold out. So if you're one of those people that are traveling, I sure hope it launches on the day that you reserved. I'll have my fingers and my toes crossed for you guys. If you're like me and not planning on staying tonight, just be ready to be sitting in traffic for a long time. Make sure to pack plenty of water and plenty of patience. Also bring snacks and stuff to keep the kids busy or entertained in case traffic does get long. I remember I was front and center for when John Glenn took off on the space shuttle and it took me four hours just to get back to Orlando. What I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna be coming here at least eight to 10 hours ahead of time. I'm gonna set up a little grill. I'm gonna bring a canopy. I'm gonna bring a fan, a little generator, and pretty much camp out here just to avoid that hectic traffic. Just let everybody that's in a rush just go. I'm gonna chill right here. Actually, I might need some time to just reminisce about what just happened once I see this rocket go up. It's gonna be exciting, mind-blowing. If you're going to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, man, good luck. You're gonna have a great seat in the house and you're gonna be surrounded. From the Visitor Center, you won't see the initial ignition. They do place TVs everywhere so you do see it. But once the rocket takes off and it goes over the tree line, you'll see it and you'll definitely feel it. If you have Feel the Heat Passes at $250 a pop, you have the best seats in the house. The Kennedy Space Center Public Affairs team confirmed at least 700 plus media have already signed up for their spots to broadcast. That number dwarfs crowds seen during the space shuttle program. And to be quite honest with you, I'm actually gonna be surprised if Artemis launches on the 29th. But I always say in all of my videos, just prepare yourself for it to be scrubbed. That way you're not disappointed if it is. Always have a backup plan. If you have children coming with you, try to go to a spot that perhaps maybe has a playground or a beach. That way they can be entertained as well if you're sitting here waiting for way too long. I have seen way more no-go for launches than go for launches, especially during the space shuttle era. It was canceled and scrubbed all the time. If you have any questions about where to go to get a good view, which is practically anywhere on the East Coast, trust me, you're gonna see it. This thing is 322 feet tall. You can see it as south as Melbourne and as north as Daytona. Your best spots to see it though are gonna be Coco and Titusville. But if you have any questions about the Space Coast, I just want to be able to make your stay here in Florida worth it. There's a bunch of local restaurants that are fantastic, and I'm definitely one that supports small businesses. I just want you to enjoy your stay in Florida. And if you're coming from a different country or a different state, let me know. I would love to know who's viewing my videos. So we can only hope that this magnificent piece of engineering marvel will carefully tick its way ever so slowly to that magic T0. And once that happens, I sure hope that you guys can fall in love even more with your space. It will definitely be a day that you'll never forget. Go SLS, go Artemis, go for launch.